be intimate in your life. He wants you to be men and women who know him every moment. Actually, you guys can sit down for a bit. Okay, I'll call you in a minute. God wants to know you intimately. That you would know his voice better than any other voice you would know. But that we would not just be readers of his word or singers of his word, but we would be doers of his word. That we would be men and women who truly, if we believe that Jesus Christ gave his life to save, people, which, which we do, but we also believe that Jesus Christ gave his life to heal people. We also believe that Jesus Christ gave his life to prosper his people. Jesus Christ also gave his life to set the captives free, which I once was, but today I am free. Let us practice that in Jesus' wonderful name. You know, it's wonderful to be here with you this morning. Wow, smiling faces. Got another baptism this morning. We had a great baptism last uh, week, but Jake's being baptized today, and that's really wonderful. And Jake's got some friends who've come along to visit him and that's uh, Yvonne and Peter and uh, Peter you've got to keep quiet yeah because um, uh, yeah and their daughter is the granddaughter or daughter wow Lydia I never met you before but hi nice to see you well Peter and Yvonne knew me before I married Barb so they have known me a long time we've been married 41 years and they knew me way before that and uh, they are just the most awesome Christian people and we love them and praise God for them I also like to acknowledge Barbara who's here from the canal uh, trust the, the, the people who work up and down spreading the gospel on the canals around our country they've been with us a couple of times you are so welcome we love having you come and we pray that God will make you powerfully effective as you go up and down those canals in Jesus name sharing the good news of Jesus Christ great to see Steve here men's breakfast Saturday morning Steve rock on hallelujah amen gonna be a great morning bring it on that's right yeah coming home yeah okay hallelujah yeah dear me it had to creep in somewhere in the morning yeah praise the Lord well you know uh, God is just uh, so so good to us but I'd like you to exercise some faith with me this morning right now because we had a three o'clock our time this morning 18 divers went deep into caves to bring little boys out so let's pray. Join your faith with people around the world. Father, I thank you right now. As the divers from around the world enter that long passageway of great difficulty, Father, I pray for every little boy and their coach. And Father God, I ask that you would send angelic hosts to minister to them as they're coming through. Put calmness in their hearts and in their minds that, Lord, they will make a great escape today. Yes. Lord, if there's one right now in the middle of that journey, I ask, Lord, be unto them everything that they need. Oh, Father, I thank you for those men who, one man who gave his life in rescuing them, but for those who've gone in this morning, Lord, it's, they say it'll be 12 hours at least, maybe 18 before they know if they can come out. Well, I thank you for them coming out in faith. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, when you hear stuff like that, it really stirs you. Well, I find it very moving that all over the world, uh, God is uh, moving. Hallelujah. Could you hold that for me, Barb, please? I don't, I don't, don't need that, but I do need this. You know, Hebrews 11, verse 6, he's told, catch it, William. Michael's not with us this morning. Michael's doing the praise and worship for St. Michael's and St. Augustine's Church, and, uh, which I'm really thrilled about. Michael, if you don't know who he is, he's the young man who will be taking over as pastor from me in September. And uh, he's really just needs your support. And I want Lizzie. Uh, excuse me. Lizzie, how's little girl? Jean. Oh, okay. Hi! Oh, praise the Lord. Well, Jeannie has been in hospital for the last 10 days or so. And uh, so it's a thrill to see them here this morning. And by, in the name of Jesus, we declare her hip healed and well in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Hebrews 11 verse 6 says, Without faith, it's impossible to please whom? God. Therefore, as children of God, we need to exercise that faith on a daily basis in our intimate walk with God. And I want to encourage you to exercise faith within the life of the church and believing with Michael for God to do great and awesome things. Now, he is a young man. He's not got all the answers. But I know someone who does, and his name is Jesus. I know that this young man called Michael, who's going to become your pastor, hears from God. 
I know that he knows the voice of our Heavenly Father. He will make mistakes, but you're going to have to learn to forgive him. He will need encouraging, so you're going to have to encourage. He does not need say those who go around saying, will they leave, will that leave, will he do this, will he do that. I'm here to tell you the gospel of Jesus Christ will never stop being preached in this church as long as I remain as one of the elders and leaders of this church with Michael in Jesus' name. We are determined that the whole counsel of God will be preached. That the whole counsel of God includes salvation. That it includes healing. That it includes prospering. That it includes deliverance. It includes everything that Jesus went to the cross for. Hallelujah. Somebody say amen this morning. Church, Michael needs your encouragement and not your discouragement. Michael needs to hear words of faith and not words of doubt and fear and unbelief. Michael needs to hear people say, well, Michael, whatever happens, I'm right behind you in Jesus' name. Because this church is destined for great things in Jesus' name. Do you know something? This church will go further in the next five years than I've taken it in the last five in Jesus' name. I don't care what you think. I'm telling you, that's what will happen. God told me, you proclaim it will and I'll do it. I have the faith to believe that God will act upon my words and I declare in this house, men and women shall continually be saved. Men and women shall be filled with the Holy Spirit. Men and women shall become men and women of great faith. They shall be men and women who will see the sick healed. There's, God will raise up in this house a man and women of stature in the name of Jesus. Will you be one of them? Amen. Hallelujah. See, it says in Ephesians also, it says, Ephesians 3, verse 16 and 17, I pray that out of his glorious riches, whose glorious riches is he talking about? Jesus' glorious riches. He may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. Okay, how does Christ dwell in your hearts? Faith. You gotta have faith. You gotta believe that what God has said, God will do. That's what we've been singing about all morning. And it says, and I pray that you being rooted, be rooted and established in love. That's not my sermon. I just wanted to share that with you. Hallelujah. <laughs> I want to encourage you to become these men and women of great faith. God wants to do something supernatural in this place. And he's not going to do it through angelic hosts. He's going to do it through you and me who are his sons and his daughters filled with the power of his Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. So I'm making a, sec a declaration. You're not going to like it maybe. But if I hear whispers coming against Michael, I'll name you in church. Why? Because, because God has appointed him. And I have no right, no one has the right to pull him down. If you don't like it, you have a choice to make. But Jesus is the author and the finisher of the race that he has set us to run. Yeah. And I am bold this morning. I am determined this morning that we, God, will do something awesome in this house through a young man who will rise up and do a great and mighty work in Jesus' name. Now, church, don't test me. I've declared it from the platform this morning. Don't test me. I will name naysayers. I will name those who gossip about it. Because I'm not going to have this work pulled down, but built up. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Okay, you'll need your Bible this morning. You need to turn with me to Romans chapter 6. We have the joy of baptizing Jake this morning. <laughs> yeah, I've been offered 25 pounds to hold him down a bit longer. Anybody increasing that? No, no, okay. Um, you know, but this is a great passage of scripture. And what I want to share with you is last Sunday night, many of you know, I went to a, a church last Sunday night where the Sunday, two Sundays before, they had a fight in church. They uh, broke TV. They smashed a guitar. They were having fisty cuffs in church. That's not an ordinary church. Uh, most of the people who come to that church, there's about 100 come on a Sunday night, and they're ex-prisoners. They're on, living on the streets. They get served dinner every Sunday before they come. And last Sunday night, I witnessed something very special before I preached. And there are people who had done wrong stood up in church and apologized and asked for forgiveness. It was the most amazing thing to see 25 minutes of people genuinely apologizing and saying they were sorry. And you know, 
the, one young man who smashed another man's guitar went and got another guitar for the, for the young man whose guitar he had smashed and gave it to him in church on Sunday night. But you know, the name of their church is called Clean Slate. And you ought to be praising God this morning that you've got a clean slate. Because you see, God, when Jesus died upon a cross, he dealt with their sin of yesterday, but he also dealt with their sin last Sunday night. He's dealt with their sin of today, and he's dealt with their sin of tomorrow. Jesus Christ went to the cross and is not going back to the cross. He went to the cross once and for all, gave his life that we might have life and have it in abundance. And last Sunday night as I watched these people, oh, share their hearts and apologize to one another, it was powerful. Tears were running down people's faces because people were recognizing that what they had done was totally wrong. Apparently the police wagon turned up and six men, ju policemen jumped out of the police wagon. Three squad cars turned up and police jumped out of the squad cars. And as soon as the hundred people in church that were throwing buns at one another and a few fists saw them they just calmed down. And you know I praise God for the police. They stayed outside. Didn't come into the building. They stayed outside. The leaders went out and met them and they said to the leaders we need people like you to work with us because you are ministering to these people who have no hope but here they're discovering hope yes they'd had a, a blow up but the police didn't arrest anybody didn't come in everything became calm and last Sunday night they talked about forgiveness and loving and caring for one another and in Romans 6 it says what shall we say what shall we say then shall we continue in sin that grace may abound certainly not how shall we who died to sin live any longer in it you see I am no longer a sinner I was a sinner but I am now saved by grace in Jesus Christ and today I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus do I still sin and make mistakes? Yes, but the work of Jesus on the cross has already dealt with the sin of my mistakes and he has given me a future which is glorious and bright in Jesus' name. And it says here, Or do you not know that as many of us who as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? And that's what Jake's signifying this morning. As he goes under that water this morning, we've broken the ice off it, it's quite cool but uh, uh, when he gets in there this morning, he's identifying with the death of his Lord and his Savior and he's saying, I have died to myself and I am leaving my old life behind under this water and as I come up out of it, I'm coming up in the resurrection power of the Holy Spirit identifying with the resurrection power of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ, woohoo! And, and as he comes out of that baptismal tank, he is also saying and I am determined to the best of my ability and with the power of God living in me to walk the walk, talk the talk and leave, live the life. Yeah. Wow, that's what baptism is all about this morning. And it says, therefore we were buried with him through baptism into death that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in newness of life. For, now, that's important you understand that. We should walk in newness of life. Therefore, the way you once walked, you should no longer be walking that way. You should be walking according to the word of God. Amen. Got one amen in the front row. Two. Hallelujah. Any advance? Three, four, four, four. Yeah. Hallelujah. They're coming. But you see, it's true. And people will say to me, but you, your life should change when you have an encounter with Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And it says, for if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. Isn't that amazing? You know, knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we no longer be slaves of sin. You're no, if you know and love Jesus this morning as your Lord and Savior, you're no longer a slave of sin. That is awesome. For he who has died has been freed from sin. When you gave your life to Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you effectively died. Your old man died. And this baptism is a glorious sign of that death, burial, and resurrection in Jesus Christ. What a glorious morning we're having. Now if we died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. I want to, who do you live with Sunday to Sunday? That means Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Who do we live with? 
Jesus. We live in him daily. We don't live with him just on a Sunday. We live with Jesus each and every moment of every day of our lives. And the joy of the Holy Spirit rises up in us because we are a victorious, like we've been singing this morning, overcoming glorious people who live by the grace of God. Hallelujah. For by grace are ye saved through not by works lest any man should we have nothing to boast about it's nothing to do with you and me it's all to do with Jesus the son of God oh, hallelujah knowing that Christ having been raised from the dead verse 9 dies no more death no longer has dominion over him for the death that he died he died to sin once for all but the life that he lives he lives to God when you gave your life to Jesus you're living your life unto God you're not living it unto yourself you're not living it unto your pastor you're not living it unto your wife or your husband you're living it unto God individually responsible it says likewise you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord wow I was doing, uh, I went to record the, my radio program on Wednesday and got there and the whole studio had been pulled apart so I had to go back at 7 o'clock Friday morning to do the recording. And you know I sat down at that microphone and got those songs listed up and that one or two may have listened to it this morning and got one, got one, hallelujah, praise the Lord, hallelujah. And the advancing one, two, I got two, three, oh, hallelujah. My numbers are going up dramatically, hallelujah. But you know as I sat down and did that radio show, it was the life of Christ in me, the joy of the Lord that rises up in me. That's why I get excited about men's meeting. You know, um, Tony came to see me last week. Came and sat in the office and didn't speak to me for 50 minutes. Made a cup of coffee and just sat with me. Then all of a sudden Tony says, this is my church will. I said, really Tony? He says, yeah. He says, you know when I come here he says, Will, I find peace. He's never been in a Sunday morning meeting yet. He will. But he will. It's many a Sunday you can find him standing outside. But he sat with me for 50 minutes and didn't say a word. And then all of a sudden he says, Will, this is my church. He says, I find God here. I find peace here. And that's what it's about. Living our lives in such a way that we are contagious to other people around us. And that's what this whole passage that Paul is writing about here. Dead to sin and alive to God in chapter 6 of Romans. It says in verse 12, Therefore do not let sin reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in its lust. And do not present your members as instruments of righteousness to sin, but present yourselves to God being alive, hallelujah, from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under law, but under... Wow. Actually, can I have my iPad again? I've just remembered something. Hallelujah. This wasn't prepared, but it's coming up. Hallelujah. We are not under law, but we are under grace. Grace, all your sins, past, present and future, have been washed away. Washed clean by his precious blood. You are completely forgiven. From the moment you receive Jesus into your life, you will never be held liable for your sins ever. Again, you've been made as righteous as Jesus, not through your behavior, but by faith in him and his finished work on the cross. The work of the cross was a finished work, church. Totally finished. Now, when we get to heaven, are you saying, will that God still loves me even though I sinned? Yes, because Jesus' blood has dealt with your sin. But we'll give an account for the life we led. We'll give an account before the throne of God for how we've lived. That's what the Red book of Revelation tells us. One day we'll stand before God not as a judge because we have already been judged. We've been judged through Jesus Christ, his son. But there's a day coming when we'll stand before the king. And I and you, I want to hear him say, well done, good and faithful servant. 
And we want to be men and women who live by this grace and the power and the and love of God. And as I re- read through this big, oh, first chapter of chapter, uh, the first part of chapter 6 of R- Romans, it says in verse 15, What then? Shall we sin because we're not under law but under grace? Certainly not. Do you not know that to whom you present yourselves slaves to obey, you're that one's slaves whom you obey, whether of sin leading to death or of obedience leading to righteousness? But God be thanked that though you were slaves of sin, yet you obeyed from the heart and that form of doctrine to which you were delivered. And having been set free from sin, you became slaves of righteousness. You are the sons and daughters of the King of Kings this morning. You are dressed in robes of righteousness. And this morning we're going to celebrate the complete work of the cross. We're going to celebrate the complete work through baptism. And then after the baptisms, Joss is going to lead us in communion as a family because we're going to celebrate everything that Jesus has done for us. This morning as you come to break bread, and if there's sickness in your body, and by the way, Bernie, lovely to see you here this morning. Hallelujah. You haven't been very well, but we praise God you're here today. But if you're got any form of sickness in your body any pains any aches when you come to break that I don't want to steal Joss's message because he's probably gone that way Jesus at the communion table just receive what you need from God hallelujah for he wants to give you each and every one of you all that you need in Christ Jesus Stuart those songs and your musicians if you can come up and join me now but those songs this morning were just so powerful in their confession for by grace are you saved through Okay. Build yourself up in faith, church. Believe God's word. Believe what he says. And people will argue with me, and people have argued with me about, do you really believe in this grace thing? Yes, I do. I believe that the work of cross was a total work. Hallelujah. Otherwise, I wouldn't be sitting here. I believe in the complete work of Jesus. He has taken me from being a slave of sin to a slave of righteousness. He's delivered me. From death unto life. He has taken me from captivity to freedom. And that's what he wants to do for you today. In Jesus name. Amen. Hallelujah. Well you're ready to celebrate.